Hi, it's Justin from Davis 3D. This tutorial is designed to help you migrate the glowing grass and plant interactions found in some of my environment assets into your own projects. By default, you'll notice that upon migrating the environments, it may not be interacting with your player. So this tutorial should help you resolve these issues and give you a better idea of how the system works. To start with, I have downloaded the Alien Swamp Plants project and am migrating it into my custom project. And we'll just migrate it into the content folder. So now that we have the uh, Alien Plants migrated into our new project, we'll just open up the uh, default level of the Alien Plants to check that everything's working. As you can see, it seems to be working. So. Uh, Planar reflections required. Uh, this is just to do with the water. You don't have to enable this if you don't want to. But uh, distance fields are definitely required if you want to have the water not looking like this. So we'll just go up to Edit Project Settings, type in Distance Fields, and just click Generate Mesh Distance Fields. You might as well just also enable the planar reflections for the sake of demonstrating this. Just hit Restart and it should uh, recompile all the shaders in your project. Okay, I've just skipped the shader compiling because that took about four minutes. But as you can see, the, uh, the water and the distance fields have worked correctly in this project. So by default, the uh, level I've created comes with its own game mode. You'll obviously want to create your own game mode based on your own player. So we're just going to select the default uh, third person mannequin and its game mode and set it to that instead. So if we hit play, you'll notice that your custom character doesn't automatically affect the grass or the physics of the plants. We'll obviously need to fix this, but before we do that, I'll just explain how the grass shader works. Open up the alien foliage folder you migrated, and under the blueprints folder, there will be a blueprint called BP Grass Capture. This is what captures the player's footsteps and sends it to the grass material. This blueprint should already be in the level, 2000 units below the landscape, at 0x and 0y. If you have a custom landscape, you will need to make sure the material is two-sided for this blueprint to capture the player correctly. Under the landscape material instance, make sure the two-sided variable is checked. This will ensure the BP grass capture works correctly with the landscape. There are two more things we need to confirm for the grass to glow correctly. First, make sure that in your landscape details, the variable effect distance field lighting is unchecked. Secondly, in the foliage mode, make sure that your grass has effect distance field lighting unchecked. If you don't do this, the grass will not work properly. So now that you have understood how the grass works, we will take a look at the example player I have created. Open up the Alien Plants folder, and under the Demo folder and then the Blueprints folder, you'll find the example character blueprint I've created. If we click on the mesh, you will notice that it has a Render Custom Depth Pass checked to Enabled. This allows the BP Grass Capture Blueprint to detect the player's mesh and apply it to the grass. So if we click on our own mesh and go to Custom Depth Pass and Enable it, and hit compile and save, then it should work on our own character. As you can see here, it's working. If you enable render custom depth pass on any mesh, it will affect the grass in the same way. So for example, if we add a sphere custom depth pass, apply that, and just do simulate physics, then uh, when we hit play, it's actually also going to make the grass glow. Pretty cool, huh? But uh, that's only going to happen when it's near the player. The moment it gets too far away, it's going to stop. And that's just to save performance. So I'm just going to delete that for now. So to get the foliage interacting with the player, it's uh, super simple. If we go down to our original demo mannequin, what you see is there's a blueprint physics plant spawner inside of this component. This uh, blueprint, I mean. So. For the sake of making this easy, I'm just going to rename this to custom character. So if you opened up your custom character, make that a separate window. And now go down to blueprints and just drag in the physics plant spawner 
into under the capsule component. So now that that's there and you hit compile, we'll see what happens. So you can see something starting to happen, but it's still not working properly. This is because we need to change the collision properties of the player's mesh. So again, if we go to the, the mannequin uh, demo, let's have a look at the uh, collision settings. So down here, the collision settings is set to vehicle. This is on the mesh. So let's open up the custom character, go to mesh, down to collision presets. Let's change that to vehicle. And they are identical now, so it should theoretically work. Yep, as you can see, it's working. And that's all you should have to do. Unfortunately, I had to set it to vehicle because of the uh, physics properties of the plants. I needed to make it a way that uh, allowed the character to walk through it without being stopped. Um, in some cases, when the plants are too big, I did want them to be stopped. So that's why it has to be set to vehicle. But the good news is um, your character, uh, the capture component should be driving everything game related. Um, the mesh itself would just have to be modified to be vehicle. So you probably noticed that some of these plants um, stop you from running through them. I'll just explain that system really quickly too. So if you open up one of these plants that stops you, at the start of the blueprint, we're asking the question, get the component bounds. So what this does is it asks, how big is the radius of this mesh? And if it is larger than two meters, then what we're going to do is just continue the blueprint as normal. But if it's smaller than two meters, we have this thing called a capsule block. Now, this is essentially a collision that blocks the player, and that's there by default. But if it's, if it's uh, smaller than two meters, essentially what that does is it destroys this component and allows the player to walk straight through it. But if that was there, then it's going to stop the player from moving. And so what that does is it just makes the tree seem stronger and more powerful. But um, if you run through a smaller tree, in fact, I'll just paint one now. A tree that's smaller than two meters would be uh, easy to run through. So let's make that 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So they just walk straight through these trees and it doesn't block the player because that capsule component's been deleted. Now, the same applies to most of these plants except for the ferns because obviously leaves aren't ever strong and shouldn't ever really stop the player. All right, I hope that's uh, explained enough for you. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Thanks, bye.